final boss of Harem Anime, a hundred girlfriends video that Giga just dropped because of the latest episodes. The mom girlfriend has been fucking insane. If you've been watching, you know what's up. Let's see what he has to say. Oh, this is the kiss zombie one. Cute. Now, before you judge, <laughs> this is exactly what it looks like. And there's more girls, trust me, there's a lot more girls in two. The harem genre is one of the most respected genres you can possibly find in anime. Is it? Is it respected? Absolutely no one. This is a genre people often put at the bottom of the barrel of entertainment, along with stuff like the... I'm still upset at you guys. I'm still upset at you guys that you wouldn't watch a hundred girl... Uh, sorry, rent a girlfriend with me. It could have been so fun reacting to this trashy ass anime, but you guys actually got too personal about with this. Entertainment, along with stuff like the isekai genre, which... Hold up. Okay, mm -hmm. there we go. Okay. I absolutely agree with. I feel like isekai is harem. Like most isekais, even though they're not explicitly ecchi or harem, like if you look at the premise of an isekai anime, the main character is just surrounded by a bunch of women that's all just basically his harem. That's pretty much it. But recently, it feels like the genre is going through a bit of an evolution. No longer can you get uh -huh. away with some boring vanilla premise anymore. There needs to be some unique gimmick, like what if all the love interests were quintuplets? Or what if the winner was actually the loser? Or yeah. what if we have a show like Girlfriend Girlfriend, where a series said, instead of leading up to one single final winner, what if we... Oh, that was the Kanojo wa Kanojo anime, right? We just indulge right? in the harem. Because, boys, why set off one girl when you can have multiple? Everything. That's what I'm saying. Oh. But what if we could have more? What if two, three, or even four girlfriends wasn't enough? What about a hundred? Well, right now we have a show so insane, so unhinged, we are now limit testing polygamy. A series about one man who found the infinite Riz glitch, became the apex of all boyfriends, and in the process may have pushed this genre. <laughs> see dog V just got a shot. <laughs> Did you see that? A series about one man who found the infinite Riz glitch, became the apex. Alright, he got it like- Wait, his hoodie says yaoi, what the fuck? Never mind, he's doing this boy dirty. He of all boyfriends, and in the process may have pushed this genre to new heights. So mm. if you looked at a series like Girlfriend, Girlfriend, and thought to yourself- Trash. I present to you, the 100 Peak. girlfriends who really, 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 really love you. That's right, five reallys. But if 100 girls still isn't enough for you to choose from, then don't worry, because we have today's sponsor, Arc Recode. Now Raid Shadow Legends, you know what to do. Use a discount code, hashtag Giguk, to get your first free pull. Okay, back to the main video. From today's video, back to 100 girlfriends. Rentaro has an incurable disease. Since birth, he's been infected with an illness known as Negative Riz. I'm sure many of us know of at least one poor soul who's been infected. Did he have Negative Riz, though, in the first episode? Like, I feel like he was... Well, he confessed to that girl, but then he immediately gets rejected. But still, I don't think that episode one Rentaro was any different from the Rentaro that we know now. What is actually different about it? He always got rejected. He did get rejected a hundred times, I know. But like, I doubt his personality was that different at the hundredth rejection, you know? In episode one, he still felt like the same Giga Chat. I, I, he didn't do a complete 180 in character, right? It's just after he meets the god and the god's like, all right, now that you've gotten a hundred rejections, Karma, the pity has been built up. You're gonna get a hundred girlfriends now. Like, I don't think his personality has actually changed. He's always been Rentaro. It's just that the girls just fall in love with him, which makes it kind of suspicious. And if you really think about it, there's no need to think about it this deeply. What if this is all bullshit? What if Rentaro doesn't actually have the Riz? And this is all just the God's magic. Affected with such an illness. Right. Graduating from school, he decides to try his luck one last time by confessing to the girl he likes and asking her Ooh. out. And, uh... <laughs> she says no. This marks a new record for him, as he's now been rejected a hundred times ever since his first... What does she actually say here, though? The idea... Wait, new record this? for him, as he's now been rejected... The idea no. of dating you makes me want to puke. Remember, guys, the worst thing that she can say is no. Trust me, you can get a lot no. worse. It can she get a lot no. worse. This marks a new record for him, as he's now been rejected a hundred times ever since his first confession when he was just eight months... This guy right here, I want you guys to pay attention. This is childhood friend A from episode one. A hundred girlfriend is about having the archetype of many different girlfriends. And if it's, it's supposed to do that, you know, like we got a Tsundere, we got a Lolly, we got a Kudere, we got a MILF, all that shit. I think there's going to be a token trap femboy cross-dressing girlfriend. I truly do believe that. And if this femboy childhood friend A comes back with a different, you know, look, with a different actual given name, 
I, I said it here first. Episode one, I said it here fucking first. Sold. That's right. My boy's been trying to chat up girls before he achieved object's permanence. His friends give him a parting gift. A knighthood. Dubbing him Sir Bitchless. Baron of Forever Singleton. <laughs> Yeah, man, they have no chill. So feeling like all hope is lost, he turns to the one and only thing that can possibly flip his life around and score him a girlfriend. The shrine. Divine intervention. And somehow, it worked. At a shrine he's praying at, he meets God, who informs Rentaro that he made a little oopsie. He's accidentally given him 100 different soulmates who he's going to be meeting soon. Jackpot, I hear you say. Oh, Think hello. Of girls. Think of all the choices. Oh, by the way, any girl that Rentaro doesn't choose will die. die. Bummer. Who sh like, will they actually die, though? I doubt they'll actually ever die. That sounds a little ridiculous, but if they did, nah, the show wouldn't do that. Should pick? Who should he reject, knowing the consequences? With a matter of life or death, the prospect of having blood on his hands, he stands up, faces the music, and makes a decision only a true protagonist can make. If the girls I don't choose dies, there is only one choice to be made. Save them all. I will date all of them. <laughs> The show is fucking stupid. The harem genre has never exactly been the benchmark of highbrow entertainment. So for those who don't normally indulge in it, you may not understand what the appeal is. Is it for the romance? <laughs> the appeal of a harem anime. Who do you think watches harem animes? And I'm, I'm not trying to, I'm, I'm not trying to shit on you guys. You know, I, we, we're watching a lot of harem anime, but you could argue that I'm, I'm watching this shit because you guys recommended me and I'm trying to fucking make some content out of it. But I feel like the appeal of harem anime is for broken men who... Might not have a girlfriend. Might have been gotten rejected. Might, might, you know, be a little bit lonely. No girlfriend, bitchless. And then they see an anime about a guy who gets fucking, who's just like them. Although the, the main character of a harem anime is usually pretty good looking. But then usually they'll say some shit like, oh, he's actually a loser or a fucking, a neat. You know, he has no job, no bitches, no money, no nothing. But he's actually pretty decent looking, you know, because the main character of an anime has to be good looking. And then they get a bunch of girls and all the girls just love him. And usually, and maybe this isn't exclusive to Harem, but the rom-com animes that we've been seeing coming out of the industry lately, all the main characters are fucking flat, wet cardboards. They have no personality. They're fucking submissive beta cucks, which is kind of cringe keywords, but they are. They have no personality. They're fucking weak, limp, bitchless, just sits in the corner, does fucking nothing socially inept, not popular, like not, not smart, like they're just the worst of the worst. And then the most popular girls will just fucking show up out of nowhere and talk to the guy. And, and then it makes you as the audience feel validated. It's like, oh, you know, that, that guy's just like me, but he gets them bitches. So it makes you feel good to watch this. But yeah, Rentaro is a giga chat though. He's not like any other rom-com character. In, or, or a main character in a harm anime. Mentaro from 100 Girlfriends, he's an actual absolute giga chat. And the girls are lucky to date him. It's not the other way around. Rentaro's not lucky. The girls are lucky. Pay attention to that part. <laughs> no. Harem anime are sports anime in disguise. Let because tournament arc. Because the girls have to compete for the guy's attention. I think that's what he's getting at. Let me say that again. Harem anime our sports anime in disguise. He's cooking. He's cooking. Find me another genre where you see weebs forming different teams based on picking a side they really want to win and completely investing themselves into cheering for that side's victory, staying dedicated throughout the entire run of the series while shitting on any supporters on the opposing sides. Fuck you, man. This is more of a sport than actual sports anime. You have the glory supporters. Now these are the fuckers that pick one of the first girls that are introduced that are almost always guaranteed to be the winner. They know the rules. First girl Hakari? wins is the bookie's favorite. I feel like Hakari's kind of, kind of winning right now, right? And they're happy to play the odds. Then you have the fans of the local teams. These guys think they're above supporting the big brand's mainline girls, so they'll cheer for their second tier side character girls that were introduced in the mid game. That's kind of me. I'm not gonna lie. The, the side characters are kind of interesting for me. Like a typical, like this is kind of, this is kind of fucked up for me to do Shizuku like this from Mahoka recently, the irregular, the, the magic, the irregular magic high school. This is kind of like a Shizuku, you know, side characters that I personally like because they were like a coup today. Not really that important. Kind of got introduced in the mid. God damn. He's, he's fucking exposing me right now, dude. In the mid game. They want to feel better by picking the girl that no one else is picking, and maybe, just maybe, Damn. this time, the girl actually has a chance of winning. 
She doesn't. <laughs> like e you follow your team through to the end, no matter how many years it takes, no matter how many hundreds of chapters, until eventually a single girl gets picked. If it's your girl, you celebrate in euphoria. You had the best taste. Your girl got the ending she deserved. Unlike any true sports fan, watching your girl win is as sweet as laughing at anyone now on Suicide Watch for backing the losing horse. But if your girl lost, there's only one thing you can do. Come to Watch 100 Girlfriends because every team will win in this show. Together with your fellow degenerates and cry about it. Together, you'll tell yourselves, it's all right. She deserved better than that bland protagonist anyway, right? And that's another thing. Never vote for the childhood friend. In these shows, in rom-com or whenever a girl's trying to get the attention of a main character, childhood friend never fucking wins. Don't even try, but... In a hundred girlfriends, it could be different because every girl will win. And that moment will become a scar you carry that will be forever etched in the hearts of fans like any sporting event. Falcons blew a 28-3 lead. PSG blew a 6-1 lead. Rui Oof. blew Natsuo, then gave him to a vegetable. This is the fan- don't get that reference, but we might have to check that anime out if there's an anime to that. Foundation of a harem series. So how can a series in the genre work where every girl is the winner, every girl gets picked, there is no losing team because everyone immediately wins? What? I would kind of say that maybe this takes away from the harm experience because people like the exclusivity that their girl won. You know, everyone loves competing with the different ships. And if their ship wins, the other ship sinks and they feel superior. But if every girl wins, do we truly win? You know that saying from Incredibles? I think the ginger guy syndicate was like, if everyone is super, then no one is super, right? So if everyone is a winner in 100 Girlfriends, then is nobody winner? I don't really know. I don't think it needs to be that deep, but it is nice that every girl does get to win and we're not really, and everybody like even supports each other in the show, right? They're not even that jealous of each other. They genuinely want to sacrifice themselves to support each another. Oh, you make fun of all that shit. Let's be real. When you're watching a series about some plain, boring ass guy with average looks suddenly having a bunch of hot girls all fawning and fighting over him, you aren't exactly coming into this for some realism you can relate to in your own. Hell no. The only thing that they can relate to is the premise of the main character in the beginning. The premise of the main character is a loner, out social outcast. Again, loser, neat, shut-in, jobless, bitchless. But then you got a fucking 10 different girls just like fawning at you for no fucking reason other than the fact that this is a main character of a harem or an etchy show. And the show is designed to make you, the audience, relate to the main character and to think that you can get the girls too. In life, right? Oh God! With harem anime, your suspension of disbelief has been pushed beyond the stratosphere already, so to parody it, 100 Girlfriend goes, let's just completely obliterate that. Everything, everything has been exaggerated to the point of insanity. Yep. Plot, design, characters, we don't have five- What the fuck did you go to the grandma when you said design? Look at this. Obliterate that. Everything. Everything, wait for it. Everything has been exaggerated to the point of insanity. He's gonna say plot, design, look. Insanity, plot, plot. design. What the fuck is Baba doing here? But the design of this character is kind of crazy. She is, I, I, she's kind of fucked up. If you really think about what she does, it's in, in, like she chases you down and fucking fr deep throats your face in, in school. She's, she's a grandma. But like, <laughs> this vice principal is actually one of the funniest characters in this show. As soon as she showed up in the anime, I could not stop laughing. She should be jailed. You're right. Fine. Characters. We don't have five girls or ten girls. We have 100 girls. Karana isn't just a tsundere. She's a turbo tsundere. She's a girl isn't just shy. She's turbo Lolly. shy. Hikari isn't just horny. She turbo horny. <laughs> Uh -oh. Mains Lisa on Genshin Impact. The series takes all the most ridiculous tropes and cliches we see in the genre, dials a knob up to 100, fucks around, and finds out. And you know what? It actually works. There's a scene early on where the characters have gotten into a bit of a conundrum. Rentaro has successfully convinced the first two girlfriends to date him simultaneously. Mission accomplished. But how did he even do that? It's because it's. N oh, oh, Jesus Christ. What a fucking, what a fucking scene to pause that. How did he even do that? He did it because he was able to save them, right? No, well. He got the... He always shows up with actions. Rentaro's not just words. And this is a theme that's being reiterated time and time. He sent a bunch of cool shit, and the girls are like, you don't really mean that. And then he proves it with his action. And this one, right? I think the girls were looking for the four-leaf clover, but they couldn't find it for hours. And Rentaro fucking then dug for hours on end to find the four-leaf clover because that meant so much to the girls. And then he showed them. And then he had dirty hands, which implied that he was looking for it the entire time. So it's like, damn. This guy really went out of his way and suffered outside for who, long, who knows how long 
just for us. Like moments like that is when this show really shines. There's a problem. This is a romance anime. And what's the most important end game achievement for any romance anime? The ship who he ends with? That's right, sharing the first kiss. But how oh. can you share a first kiss when you have two girls that you love equally to receive that kiss? Three way, just, just at the same time, you know? If you've seen Data Live, we did the same thing with the Yamai twins, you know, three way kiss. Sounds like we got ourselves a little bit of a pickle here, lads. So the girls have a full 1v1 Fox only Final Destination girlfriend off, trying to out girlfriend each other so only the superior girlfriend will be the lucky recipient of that first kiss. This episode is fucking insane in terms of fan service. Holy shit, when they put the blindfold on. Yes, but no, there is no unfairness. No infighting allowed in the Rentero family, so the Giga Chad himself has the perfect solution. Coin toss? Rock, paper, scissors? Nah. He devises a system where they split up and stand up at randomized points based on a dice roll. They are all blindfolded, Bro. having music. The blindfold is so intentional. This is, come on now, this is pure fan service. And then when the cat came over and started scratching at Karane, oh my Stick god. He's in their ears at full blast. He rolls a dice, waits a random number of seconds based on that dice roll so neither girl knows if he's waited a long or short time, then rolls again. He goes left if it's odd, right if it's even, kisses the girl, then moves on to kiss the other girl. Once he's finished, he returns to the starting position and bobs your uncle. The first kiss with each girl has been accomplished and neither party knows who the first kiss was with. This is the first kiss equalizer. This is one of the saner things you ever see in the show. Does this mean it's a show that's above showing fan service because it's meant to be parodying Harem? No, there's a lot. <laughs> this is what Kusa is trying to... I love... I love you fucking censored just blurred the ass right here. There will be a mole right over here, guys. Pay attention to Ka Hakari's right ass cheek, upper thigh. Up upper thigh right over here, there's a mole. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> <laughs> no. It knows how to openly poke fun of the genre without being overly reliant on cheap shots, because the biggest compliment I can give it is that beyond being just a parody, the cast have genuine chemistry with each other. Always Sunny, Get it. Parks and Recreation, chemistry. Peep Show. A lot of my favorite sitcoms have a core cast that already works so well with each other. So the secret is just putting them in different situations to see how they'd act. And what Akari has a mole on her breast as well. Are you sure about that? I'm pretty sure that's Kusuri. Kusuri has that on her upper left titty. Hakari has a mole on her upper right ass cheek. I don't remember a mole on her breast. I, I know these details pretty well, man. My girlfriend is like putting an all-you-can-eat buffet of every insane character trope you see in anime in the most unhinged situations you can think of and seeing what kind of insanity would ensue. The girls play off each other as much as they do rent -row. They fight with each other, banter with each other, sincerely care for one another. Every mm. girl has a different dynamic. With right over there. Right over there. Gotcha. Gotcha. Right over there in 4K. But what Giga saying is right. All the, all the girls really do care for each other. I thought that usually in these kind of shows where the girls are competing over the main character's attention, they're like straight up just hostile. Well, in a funny way, right? But there is still, they're still competing against each other. In this show, every girl will like step aside for each other because they care about each other so much. There is no waifu wars going on. No, 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 no. Every girl will help each other so that you can get your time rent out and I think that's one of the genius of this show. Different dynamic with every other girl and partway through the series the harem starts acting more like some dysfunctional family than anything else. When I started this series I thought it was going to be some low XD silly meme show with a funny gimmick that I would get bored of after a few episodes. It kind of still is like that for me but uh, it's still good. Every episode has been a fucking banger but can they continue with this format? And, and like not get stale? We'll have to really see about but that. But after I caught up to the anime and realized that wasn't enough, I started blasting through the manga. And it was around Girlfriend 12 that it slowly started to dawn on me that- Girlfriend 12, by the way. Oh my god. Like this manga panel, maybe it's a bit of a spoiler, but that's insane. Look at this. We have 12 girlfriends. Remember, we gotta get 100 girlfriends. How the fuck is this gonna work, dude? Holy shit. This isn't just a gimmick. These mad lads are actually committing to the idea. You'd think with such a batshit crazy concept, it'd be easy to just rush through it. Introduce a bunch of girls and relegate most of them to background NPCs to let- But they all get their own episodes, right? Each time we get a new girl, we invest time back into them with like an episode to really consolidate into waifus. To select few shine. But as you continue reading, you see the author going the extra mile for every- Are we on the rooftop right now? <laughs> Dude, there's so many girls! Our fucking rooftop high school lunch. It's just getting bigger. Every single bigger. one of them. Every girl gets a time to shine. Not a single one of them is a half fake stereotype. Even if they start off with some Why is she so tall? <laughs> she is six foot six. What is going on here, dude? Even if they. 
<laughs> so in the future, we might get like a like an insecure girl because she thinks she's too big and tall, right? But then Rentaro's like, no, your height is what's beautiful about you. And she was like, oh my god, the first boy that's ever seen me as a woman and not a fucking fee fi fo fum giant. Start off with some trope you've seen before. The series takes its time to get you to care Jesus about each Christ. and every one of them as a person. This is one of those shows that tells you not to take it too seriously, then triples the fuck down on these serious moments you weren't expecting to make it hit even harder. And for any other harem manga, this would simply collapse under the weight of its own ambition, but 100 Girlfriends has the glue that binds everything together. Michael Jordan, Lionel Messi, Muhammad Ali, the goats. Tiger Woods. What do they have in common with Aijo Rentaro? They're all just goats. They're all giga chads. That's right. They're the goats of their yeah. respective positions. I mean, with multiple women. My man saw Japan's. <laughs> that was so fast. He mumbled this so quick. 13 years ago, Tiger Woods was publicly disgraced for having 120 affairs, guys. This is his family now. This is more than a. Red that, that's 120 girlfriends that really, 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 really love you, dude. This is why he's the undisputed goat. My man saw Japan's population crisis and said, fine, I'll do it myself. Here is someone in line to father more children than Genghis Khan. And you know, Genghis Khan himself once said, and I quote, The greatest mm. joy for a man is to defeat his enemies, to drive them before him, to take all they possess, to see those they love in tears, to ride their horses and hold their wives and daughters in his arms. So clearly, Genghis played League of Legends. But Rentaro <laughs> isn't a toxic gamer like that. He captures the hearts of women by being the best damn boyfriend is actually possible to be. If there was a complete antithesis to Kazuya, Rentaro would be it. He doesn't just show love to his- That's a little shade to, uh, to this, this motherfucker, huh? This is, uh, what was it again? Rent a girlfriend again? I really did like his, her design, but goddamn, this guy based on episode one, what a piece of shit he was, huh? Truly, just absolute trash. But compared to Rentaro, yeah, they are just, you can't even compare the two. Rentaro is such a better person than this, yeah, this Rentaro trash. Rentaro would be it. He doesn't just show love to his girlfriends. He downright worships his girlfriends. Every single one of them. Equally. And you know what? He fucking deserves it. Here is a man who has only known rejection in his life. The Giga Chad confessed a hundred times. That's failed right. Failed one hundred times. That's a hundred fucking L's he had to get to this point. And didn't let that phase him. Where every other harem protagonist takes 200 chapters to come to terms with their feelings, Rentaro only knows the pain of unrequainted love and will go to any lengths to make sure his loved ones don't feel that same thing. One of his potential girlfriends suffered from crippling shyness. She was a background character and- A little bit spoilers, but I, I see you Finn! Fizz Wiz, the wiki, the wiki, 10 out of 10. You are a founder. Thank you for the tier one Just sub. by getting a bit of attention, she would disappear. All she could muster up was the strength to confess behind a wall. And that was okay. That was all she needed to be satisfied. With but was Rentaro listening really carefully the entire time? The girl was like whispering, I love you. But then she actually didn't. And Rentaro is such a giga chat that he understood what was going to happen. Before she would fade away again. And she did. She would never be seen again. Oh. It was said as the chapter comes to an end. She's dead? Only for Rentaro to rip the manga pages to shred, force the chapter to keep going, goes literally superhuman looking for her and didn't- this, this is fucking breaking the fourth wall. He's like, nah, you think the manga chapter's gonna stop? No, I'm not gonna let it stop. Talking to he could say, I love you, bitch. This is a man who would shatter the fourth wall, literally bend the laws of reality to make every single one of his girlfriends happy. He is the apex boyfriend every boyfriend aspires to be, and under his watch, there is no best girl war. Every girl is equally loved. All girls are best girl. There is no contest. If the readers want to vote on their favorite, he will literally rig the vote so every single one of the girls get the same amount. In the Harem series, containing the Harem of Harems, theoretically the most ferocious battlefield you'd be able to find in anime, he's achieved the waifu world peace now if that's not real <laughs> waifu world peace but again like i said before is double-edged sword i don't really know but like if every girl wins doesn't it, it, it's kind of hard to like make everybody stand out equally and have them be appreciated so far i feel like 100 girlfriends are doing well but the 100 girlfriends later on surely there's gonna be problems and if everybody wins is everybody really winning i'm not really sure do other girls need to lose for other girls to feel special does there need to be losers so that winners can exist? This is some deep, profound question that I don't really have the answers for. I'm just watching this anime because booba. Power. I don't know what is. 100 Girlfriends is truly an enigma, a series with an insane premise that actually fully commits to it and delivers where most of the series in the genre is parodying fails. Currently, we're about 150 chapters in and about 26 girlfriends have been introduced at the time of recording. Yes. Imagine, like, how are they going to pay all these different voice actors too? Because, like, 
It's think about it from like an infrastructure side, from the anime studios. You gotta have a hundred different girls. That's a hundred different fucking contract. I don't really know how like they deal with this kind of stuff. Like, are they gonna be like specific contract work? Are they gonna be on a salary because they're part of the show? I I don't really know, but it's kind of ridiculous, huh? So we are only just over a quarter of the way through, and the author has said they are fully dedicated to getting that full one hundred. So no matter how many more hundreds of chapters or years I have to wait, you bet your ass I will be sticking with this, whatever the end game of this harem looks like. I ain't got my glasses. How much are these? Nine ninety nine. Rent out of chapter 1000. <laughs> Sheesh, look at that. You think I can get some bitches with these? Oh, oh yeah, you can. <laughs> Will Rentaro get a hundred girlfriends before Luffy finds the One Piece? Better yet, will Rentaro get a hundred girlfriends before Hunter x Hunter gets, comes back from hiatus? Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that video. I always enjoy Gigox videos. Now, please, guys, go like this video and subscribe to Gigox channel. We always love to show support for smaller channels on YouTube, right? I know Gigox only at 3.55 million subs, but I think he can get to 4 million if you guys hit the like button. Again, this show, 100 Girlfriends, I, th I thought it was just going to be a meme show in the beginning. And it kind of still is a meme show, but I didn't understand how sincere and genuine it can become. Rentado is a refreshing refreshing take on a main character in this etchy harem rom-com you know era where every main character is just a weak piece of shit that the girls fawn over just for fucking relatability to a degenerate audience that they're trying to sell the product to i don't know but rentaro truly a giga chat i love him and i think you guys should watch the show too some people are not gonna watch it because it's like harem but still i think this is a show definitely worth checking out and i believe this show is going two cores so we're eating we're eating good